In this week's Tablet Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to create a combination bar chart and candlestick chart. This is an example of something I created for Makeover Monday that shows the difference in ad spending between 2020 and 2019. The bars represent the amount of spending for 2020, or 2012 and 2020, and then the little candlestick represents the difference between the two, and this helps you understand, gives you a bit more context about that difference. So let's see how we go ahead and build that. For my example, I've connected the Superstore sales, and I'm going to look at the view by category and region. If I drag order date to the, to the rows as well, you can see I have the data by year, and I'm going to put sales into the columns. What I want to do is I want to be able to compare these 2012 or 2019 and 2020 bars, but I have a third bar that shows the difference between the two. Okay, so how do we go about doing that? Well, I'm going to take year off the view and I'm going to take sum of sales off the view. I'm going to create a new calculated field. I'm going to call it sales 2020. This is going to be a pretty simple calculation. It's just going to be if the year of order date is equal to 2020, then sales else, zero, end. I'm going to duplicate that, edit the copy, and I'm going to call it sales 2019. And all I have to do is change the formula to say 2019. Now one other thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need a copy of this sales 2020. So I'm just going to right click on sales 2020 and choose duplicate. You'll see why in a minute. Now this is where understanding how to use measure names and measure values comes in very handy. So I'm going to drag sales 2020 to the columns, and I'm going to go ahead and drag my 2019 sales on top of the axis for sales 2020. You can see we have two green rulers, which is going to result in a combined axis view. What you'll see is measure names and measure values now come into play. Okay, so previously in the columns, we had sales 2020, but because we created that combined axis view, that is switched to measure values, and measure names has appeared in our rows. We also now have an additional shelf that holds the values for the measures. In this case, our two measures are sales 2020 and sales 2019. What we need to do now is we need to get a third bar in here that's going to show the difference, but the difference has to be a candlestick and not a bar. So to do that, I'm going to take my sales copy, sales 2020 copy, and I'm going to drag it up to the top of the chart till I see that dashed line. That's going to give me a dual axis chart. And when I drop that in there, you'll see I now get a third row in my measure names. I'm going to go ahead and synchronize that axis. Now to, to give me that, that uh, candlestick look that, I'm, that I want, I'm going to go to the bar, the, uh, the sum of sales 2020 copy bar, and I'm going to change that to be a Gantt bar. And you can see that line is just at the end of the 2020 like we would expect. Now what we wanted to do is we wanted to, draw, uh, to show the difference between these two bars. So to do that, I need to create another calculated field. And for simplicity, I'll just call this difference. It's going to be the sum of sales for 2019 minus the sum of sales for 2020. The reason we do it in this order is because if 2019 is bigger than 2020, we want the bar to go to the left. If it's the other way around, we want the bar to go to the right. So let's hit OK, and let's drag that onto the size shelf. And now you can see we get that bar that extends, uh, that, that sort of connects 2019 to 2020. OK, so now it's just a matter of cleaning this up. So my Gantt bar, I'm just going to reduce the size of that until I get it kind of the look that I want. I'm going to take, and instead of having, uh, let me go back to my measure value shelf here and assign some different colors. So sales 2020. 2019, let's make that blue, and let's make the sales 2020 red, or no, let's use a different color. Let's use maybe, uh, maybe um, I don't know, green, that's okay, or, or orange, let's do that, there we go. And what I want to do is I want this bar to be colored by whichever year is greater, either 2019 or 2020. So I'm going to create a new calculated field, and I'm going to call it difference color. And all I need to do is I need to just say difference, that difference calculation that we did, is that greater than zero? So if it's greater than zero, that means 2019 is greater than 2020. So hit OK. And now you see we have a Boolean calculation. It has a TF in the front of it. And I'm going to drag that to the color shelf 
of my Gantt bar. And now you can see the colors match. But I need to reverse these colors in the view. So the, the false should be orange and the true should be blue. Okay, and there we go. We now have that combination chart. Now one thing that would be useful is to know the percent difference. If I go back to the example I looked at, I am also showing the percent difference between the two. So to create that, I'm going to create one more calculated field. I'm going to call this percent difference. And the percent difference is going to be the sum of 2020 sales minus the sum of 2019 sales. Wrap that whole thing in brackets and divide that by the sum of sales for 2019. That's going to give me the year over year difference. I'm going to go ahead and set the default number format for that. I'm going to make it a percentage to one decimal and hit OK. All right, I'm going to drag that to the label shelf of my Gantt bar. And you can see now we have the difference between the two. What I would like though is I would like a little plus sign next to the ones that are positives. So I'm going to edit my, uh, I'm going to right click on my percent difference field, go to default properties, number format. And you can see it's set up as one decimal, but it doesn't give me the plus in front. So I'm going to change it to a custom number format. And now I can tell Tableau how to, uh, what to draw for a positive and a negative. So I'm going to do plus 0.0% for the positives, a semicolon, and then minus 0.0% for the negatives. Hit OK. And now you can see the numbers match. Great. Okay, so a bit more cleanup here. I'm going to go ahead and hide the axis for the top. I'm going to go ahead and edit the axis at the bottom, and I'm going to get rid of the title. I'm going to go ahead and hide the header for the measured names. And inside each of these bars, I want to make sure that I have the tooltip. So I want to have sales 2019, sales 2020, and the difference and the percent difference. So I'm going to go to the all marks card, and I'm going to drag in all of these fields onto the tooltip. And now you can see on the tooltip, I can see all four of those fields. Okay. So a bit more cleanup. So I'm going to right, right click in the chart and choose format. I'm going to go to my lines. And for me, I don't want the grid lines. So I'm going to uh, turn the grid lines on and back off. I'm going to turn off my zero line. I'm going to then go to my borders option. And all I want is uh, maybe borders. Let's say I only want borders between the furniture and the categories. So I'm going to just reduce my row divider down one. And I'm going to turn my column divider off. OK, so now we get a nice clean view. But I don't like how central is, a, is even with the blue bar and not even not kind of in the middle. So I'm going to right click on the region, one of the regions and choose format. And in my alignment, I'm going to set the vertical to center. For my categories, I'm going to right click on my category and choose format. And for that one, I actually think I'll rotate the text. Maybe I'll make it bold so we can see it a bit better. And maybe I'll make it a slightly bigger font. OK, I'm going to drag it over just a little bit to give me a bit more space. And then you see I have the word category here tilted to the left hand side. So I'm going to right click on that and choose hide field labels for row. And there we go. Now um, I would probably maybe choose a bit better colors here. So let's go ahead and clean those up. I'm going to go to my measure name shelf and let's pick some different colors. Let's go ahead and uh, let's maybe go to this orange to aqua color palette. Uh, no, let's do something better. Let's choose maybe. Um, Let's see, let's go to one of these other color palettes. Let's pick maybe uh, superficial stone. So I'm gonna make sales uh, 2019, this greenish color, make sales 2020, this purple color. Hit okay. Okay, that's not too bad. And then I need to do the same thing on here. So my, my true, let me go back to that superficial stone. My true should be the uh, green and the false should be the purple. Hit okay. And now we can see the difference between the two. I'm going to go ahead and make my Gantt bars ever so slightly more narrow. But yeah, that's about it. So that's how you create a combination bar chart and candlestick chart. Hope you found it useful. Have a great day.